What book in the Bible do you think doesn't even mention God? Welcome to Bible on the Go with Dr. Dan. The book of Esther. The book of Esther doesn't mention God anywhere. And the book of Esther is the 17th book of the Bible in the canonical order and the final and 12th book of the historical books. It's such an amazing story, and it's true. It occurs during the Persian reign of Xerxes, king of Persia. Now, in the Bible, he's also called Ahasuerus. It's the same king, and it starts with really a dramatic thing because the queen Vashti is deposed from being queen, and then they go on a search to find the queen, and lo and behold, Esther wins and is chosen because apparently she met all the qualifications. And so uh, it's amazing in and of itself by the time you're at chapter two, where she rises from her lowly state or her economic state, I should say, to be queen of Persia. Well, this is a very strategic moment and the story begins to develop from this place. She has a cousin named Mordecai who works in the court of King Xerxes. And he hears about a plot against Xerxes to have him assassinated. And he tells the right people, it gets to Ahasuerus, it gets to Xerxes, and uh, it ends up saving his life. Well, it's quite the story in and of itself, but that's not the big story. In fact, later, King Xerxes likes to promote people, and he promoted this fellow named Haman. Well, unfortunately, Haman was uh, anti-Semite. He hated the Jews, and he really hated Mordecai. And it really kind of accentuated the issue because they wanted everyone to bow down to this new administrator, Haman. And Mordecai's like, I'm not doing that because I don't serve, I don't, I don't do that because I'm a Jew. Well, this just got under Haman's skin something fierce. And by the time we get to chapter three, verse seven, we find out that, that Haman's gonna, gonna get after Mordecai and he has a plot to have him killed. And, it's, and he begins to work and administrate through the kingdom to try to get win favor with the king while plotting against Mordecai. Well, by the time we get to chapter four, we notice that Haman, because he happens to be related to Esther, he goes to see her. And he basically says in chapter four, he's like, you have to intervene because he's not just going to kill me. He's going to destroy all the Jews. And uh, this is just really bad. And even uh, Queen Esther is, is like, hey, I can't just go walking in to the king. If he raises his, if he doesn't raise his scepter, I could lose my life. Like I'm in this, I'm in this spot and I'm in this place. It's very difficult to just go into the king and talk about something because of course he's the king of Persia, right? Which is in control of the world and of uh, the known world at the time. And so this really gets to the place where Mordecai says, look, if you don't, if you don't help, um, uh, it could be, it could be the end of you as well. And we can trust the Lord that's going to come from other pla another place. Well, well, we'll get back to that. Well, finally, Esther does create a plot, a plan to go take the risk and to go in and save, uh, not just Mordecai, but everybody. So in chapter five is this grand appeal. She goes to see the king and the king raises his scepter to her. He says, Esther, what would you like for me to do up to the half of my kingdom? She says, I want to do a banquet for Haman. And so he allows it. And then the king can't sleep one night. And he's and he asks the question, who was it that found out about that plot to kill me? And come to find out it was Mordecai, right? And so he honors Mordecai, right? And in the process, the banquet 
happens, and Esther reveals the big evil plan of Haman to have Mordecai and the Jews executed. Well, that does not sit well with the king at all. And so guess what? He says, let's have Haman hanged on the gallows that Mordecai was supposed to be hanged on. And it, and and basically Esther saved the day, right? Well, this brings up, it was such a tremendous victory. By the time we get to chapter 9, the Jews have defeated their enemies and they established the Feast of Purim that is a feast of Judaism to this day in chapter 9, verse 20. And then the book ends talking about how great and wonderful Mordecai is. So the tables were really turned on Mordecai because Esther took the risk. And it brings me to my favorite verse. It was when Mordecai responded to es Esther's initial refusal to to intervene in chapter 4, verses 13 and 14, when it says this, Then Mordecai told them to reply to Esther, Do not think to yourself that in the king's palace you will escape any more than all the other Jews, for if you keep silent at this time, relief and deliverance will rise for the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. And who knows? whether you have not come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Well, that apparently was word from God that Esther took to heart and made the intervention that we find out about in chapter 5. It's a wonderful story, and it may not mention God, but we certainly see the activity of God in the book of Esther. Praise God! Thanks for watching Bible on the Go with Dr. Dan. If you like this video, hit that button called subscribe. It doesn't cost a thing and you only have to do it once. Praise God.